Salesforce is one of the top performing stocks so far this year, despite or maybe helped out by activist pressure from the likes of Elliott Management, Third Point, Value Act, and Starboard. Well, joining that brigade last week, Strive Asset Management, known for its anti-woke investing, and with a very small stake in CRM, just under $1 million. Joining us now is Strive Asset Management co-founder Anson Frerichs. It's, it's good to have you on the show, Anson. You know, I hesitate to even call you an activist investor because it's such a small stake, and it, and it feels very political, what you're doing, is it not? Well, Sarah, that's a great question. We're actually not doing something that's political. And we've already been able to have major changes in corporate America with, sm with stakes even smaller than we've had in Salesforce at companies like Exxon and companies at Disney. And so we wrote a letter to, to, to Salesforce on behalf of our shareholders where we're looking to unlock value beyond what the traditional activists have already done. We believe that one of the overlooked pieces is the political nature that Salesforce has done and how that is the detractor to, to shareholder value. If you take a look at Mark Benioff, he's one of the biggest proponents of stakeholder capitalism in the ESG movement, whereas his actual fiduciary responsibility is to actual shareholders, which is required under Delaware law, which is where Salesforce is incorporated. So on behalf of our investors, we wrote a letter to Salesforce asking them to do away with some of the political culture that's taken away from value and move to one that's more performance-based. It is political, though. Your founder is running for president. He's on every news network every single day hammering this exact message. How could you say it's not political? What was interesting is that our my, my co-founder, Vivek, he's actually stepped away from Strive. He stepped away from his board seat, and he no longer has an active role in the organization. And that's so we can keep our message clear, that our message is to depoliticize corporate America. We want companies to get focused on getting back to excellence, creating excellent products and services for their end customers that creates customer loyalty, creates customers coming back and time and time again to buy their products. That's what delivers shareholder value. And that's actually what people can, whether you're black, white, gay, straight, Democrat, Republican, we don't care. You can come to the private sector and rally behind that message. Whereas in the political sector, you actually have accountable politicians that through the electoral process can go and effectuate change on other important public policy issues. And so that's how my co-founder stepped away. And frankly, we actually think people like Mark Benioff or Jamie Dimon or for that matter, Larry Fink at BlackRock, if they want to use some of their uh, large positions at corporations to effectuate change, they should actually potentially step away as well. It's interesting, you know, Anson, maybe you know, people don't leave their values behind when money starts getting involved. Maybe the, the issues you're raising about activism at Salesforce are in fact performance-based because Benioff is making the calculation that they encourage a flow of capital in their direction. You know, what's interesting, though, is if you take a look at some of the, the, the things that, let's call it the other activists are taking a look at. They're taking a look at financial issues as to why Salesforce is underperformed. They've had problems with, with, with overhiring. They've had issues with a subpar mix of, of growth well, and That's performance. a totally different discussion if, in fact, that's what you're criticizing. No, we're, 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 that's not what we're criticizing. That's what one side's doing. We're taking advantage. Of, we're taking a look at the other piece that have not been identified by those people, which is when you still have Salesforce that has hundreds of millions of dollars a year being used by what's called a social justice task force to try and effectuate change on things like defund the police initiatives, trying to overturn yeah. voter election laws in, in Georgia. These are issues that we're saying, like, are these actually in the best interest of shareholders or not? Because Salesforce's mission is to actually be a the leading sale, uh, uh, software company that can connects companies with their customers. Are these things in line with that mission to connect customers within their companies, or are these really just advancing a political so. agenda? I think so. If their employees, if their employees believe in it and they want to hire the best employees, I, I think also that the, the theory that you're saying that this is a company that doesn't prioritize profitability has been completely disproven by last earnings, where, where they raised their operating margin guidance. They think it's going to be 30% by 2025 and have doubled share buybacks. So I'm not sure what you're accusing them of. And so we hope that they get there. If you look historically, we wrote our letter before their last earnings call, and it's great. We're happy with the earnings that they had last quarter, but one quarter is not going to get them from here to 2025. And to actually get to 2025, it's not just, again, taking care of some of the bloated cost structures, undoing some of the mistimed and poorly, poorly acquisitions that they had. They're going to have to drive a cultural change at Salesforce. And we take a look at a lot of their employees. If you go to Glassdoor or others, they talk about a suffocating culture. At, at Salesforce or other employees, they don't like a performance-based culture where they're asking people to actually hit sales quotas and sales goals. So we're glad they've updated that guidance to get to higher profitability, higher margins, higher growth. But to actually get there, I think they're going to have to actually change the culture of the organization and be more focused on actually carrying out that mission of connecting companies with their customers. And we're just calling into question is some of the, 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 the sidebar mm -hmm. political activism, is that going to get them there or not?